What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nate. Our company is custom made by us, and I'm just gonna get things rolling this morning. Get the bell big screen out. Oh, you know, before I do that, turn on my transformer. Turn on the old beast. So it is 6:47. I got up at five this morning, so monitor situated. Thing is, is um, I don't um, I actually have to do some laser work this morning before I get started on my print jobs. So I will turn on my oven, and yes, these are my. My pillow guy slippers. They are comfy cozy. So leave that alone. So down this side of the garage is where the laser engraving happens. So I have a neighbor that is a wood artisan craftsman. Very nice uh, work that he does. These are the bowls uh, that he has created. He turns them. This looks like it's one solid piece. Very nice. They're very, um, very smooth. So, and then this one's obviously multiple pieces. This actually looks like maybe it's one block on that base. I don't see any seams, but he has a different color wood around the, the edge of it. So obviously he glued it together and then worked it out, but that's, um, that's one of his bowls. So what he has me do is I laser engrave on the bottom of it, handcrafted by his name. His name is semi in a cursive style of writing. So it looks like it's signed. So um, this is the snap maker. It's my laser uh, system. This is a three-in-one, so this head is interchangeable with these heads. I've got the CNC. This is the 1.6 watt laser that comes with it, and then this is the uh, heat extruder for 3D printing. It prints uh, PLA uh, filament. So I did upgrade the laser from, this is, a, again, a 1600 milliwatt, so it's 1.6 watts um, I did upgrade that to this little monster here is just a 10 watt and then I recently purchased their upgrade to the 40 watt um, laser but I don't think that's shipping until December and then they've got a quick uh, disconnect set so what kind of is a bummer this is the setup for laser if I want to do CNC carving, I literally have to take out every single one of these bolts. There's like, I don't know, 16 of them. And then I have to come over here and this is the CNC plate. And then this one here is obviously the um, 3D printing. It's a heated bed. And then this, there's four screws on the back of this attachment or the the laser head that this has to come off so I can put the other attachments on. So they came up with a quick connect system where it's like a lever. You just pull up a lever and this comes off and put the next one on and the lever goes down. Same thing with the, the beds, a little lever system to take them on and off. Ordered that, but again, I don't think I'll see that until end of the year or maybe first part of uh, 2024, depending on when it ships. So this device is controlled by my laptop. There's some better laser engraving applications out there. Um, I use the one that comes with it. It seems like that's all I really need. It's called Luban. Got laptops everywhere out here in the garage. Okay, so. Down here I've got um, 3D printers. These are resin printers. So this is the Anycubic Photon D2. It's got a very small build plate, so you can make really detailed, very small prints. This is the wash and cure station for this guy. 
um, but then I ended up going out and buying this monster here. That's the Anycubic Photon M3 Max. So you, you can see the build plate size is much more substantial than that build plate size. And then that's its wash and cure station there. So I keep my cleaning solution there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I haven't done a whole lot of 3D printing lately though, which is fine. I'm getting a little overwhelmed with, I shouldn't say that. Overwhelmed is good. Um, I'm getting busy with the print business, so. Uh, no thanks. Oh, this, this thinks it just needs to open up a bunch of stuff I don't need. Let's wait for it to open the man. I always gotta have a Jason somewhere, so. That's a little laser engraved Jason I did on a small piece of wood. My little work area is a little bit messy right now, so I gotta kinda organize that up a little bit better. I've got some um, slate tiles and we just got these in just to test them out. So these are things for like putting your food on or whatever. We're gonna run some tests on those and see if it's viable. <clears throat> so this laptop's not uh, the best laptop in the world. I've had it for probably five plus years. Um, it's probably end of life, but for me, it does what I need it to do. Once it's booted up and I get into the applications and do what I do, it, it uh, works as I would hope it would work. So the first thing I do, though. <clears throat> Actually, I say it's the first thing. So his uh, graphic is loaded. Um, I never change it. Size, it's 40 millimeters wide by 4.2 millimeters high. Um, at least just that first part of the logo or image. So I'll click next. So this is where you generate the G code. That you send to the device. And once it's done, we'll go into the workspace. So we'll do export G code to workspace. So there's what we're going to burn. I click cancel. So I've got a USB interface that goes to the device. So that is showing as a serial connection. You can connect via Wi Fi, but I prefer hardwired connections. So COM4 connect. It's going to tell me it needs to move. Back to zero. <clears throat> it takes a moment for this little guy to get back up and go all the way to the corner and this will come all the way forward. So these little rubber things, I'll take them off. Those are used when I do uh, slate coasters. Just to kind of position them. Okay, so once I get it to there, I tell it that I want the X coordinate to be zero. So it's going to run to the center, and then I tell it I want Y coordinate to zero. Okay, so that gets that there. All right, so at this time, Inside the software, we turn on the laser beam. You don't see it. One thing I do, or that you have to do, is measure the thickness of your material. So this bowl is roughly 60, uh, I'm gonna say 67. I'll need to grab another side and check it. It's hard to say. You got to be close. Uh, that says 64. 
So that's a 68, 67. So I'm going to go with 67 <coughs> for this first one. So normally I write it up here on my board, 67 millimeters. Uh, sometimes I've measured and then forgotten by the time it's time to turn it on. So we set the bowl in here. <coughs> so you can see better with that in front of the door. Um, so when I turn the laser power on, it turns it on at a low power. Uh, I'm gonna turn on the air purifier. And then I lower my Z axis. So you probably can't see it, or maybe you can, there's a blue laser that's setting up on top of there. I can come down one more. Okay, so then what we do is we run a boundary and the boundary shows us where it's gonna laser that image. So right now it's just kind of trial and error getting it as centered as possible. And I always try to go along the grain of the wood so I'll run boundary again. And to me, that looks good. So laser won't come on unless the doors are closed. In the software, I click on start on Luban. It asks me what's the material thickness. So my board is 67 millimeters and I click start and keep an eye on it as it goes down there's an emergency stop right here just in case because you don't want the laser to smash into the material so but it's often running so this burn takes and it's already at 5%. I think it takes maybe 15 minutes on this one. What does it say? Elapsed. doesn't really give me estimated. Elapsed time. Remaining time. It's just four minutes. It takes longer than that, though. So once that one's done, I'm going to measure this bowl. Put it in there. Do the same process. And again, I try to get the name to go. If you look at the bottom of this bowl. And the grain kind of goes this way. So I try to get the name to go in. Now I won't go across the grain that way. So I'm just put it in there like that. And then uh, he's supposed to come at about 8.30 to pick up these two and uh, give me one more to burn for him. And he makes a lot of these. And it's interesting is I don't think he uh, doesn't charge for them. I mean, he's retired and uh, he just loves making them and he just gives them away to... Uh, people in the neighborhood so very uh, very nice so okay lasers are going I think I'm gonna cut this video off here it's not gonna be too long let's see how long is my video so far well, it's 15 minutes longer than I thought all right well thanks for watching um, I don't think I need to show the other part of the video because it's gonna be the same as the first part of the video so if you like my videos please uh, click that like button uh, share my videos if you could subscribe to the channel click the notification bell so you can get updated when we post new content and as always we'll see you next time and i appreciate you thank you see a little multitasking going on so we're lasering the bowls and getting the dtf print started for the day so the smaller ones are easy i don't have to babysit them as much and I don't even uh, have it pick up on the, the intake reel I'll just have it pick up on the table so in this bowl I know I already ended my video but I'm going to have to show you the, the finished goods so this bowl's ready. We're at 56 millimeters. If I run a boundary, I'm not happy with that.
run boundary. This looks like it's off just a smidge. Let's go the distance on either side of the bowl. So if I run boundary, I think that looks pretty good. Let me run it again. Good. So we're going to start. Always change your material thickness or you will break something. 56 millimeters. And we're off to the races. And once that one's done, I'll show you the what it actually looks like. So. And this ETF print is done. Good start for the day. Okay, so I am done with the bulls. Actually, he's bringing me one more, so at 8.30, so I'll leave it on for now. But this is the finished product. Not sure if that's in focus or not. Maybe, maybe not. But that's all he wants it to say. And all of his bowls have that on it, so. And I enjoy doing it. All right, now my video is over. We'll see you on the next one.